Hi everyone and welcome back to my podcast. I'm your host Claire and today we'll be talking about all things knitting and crafty related and a little bit about what's been going on in my life since we last spoke. This was formerly the Tiger Knits podcast and currently we are nameless. I came up with the Tiger Knits name because I just needed something to call it and my blog is Ancio Integris which is the Latin name for um, part of snow leopard and tiger, which are my two favourite animals. It was a while ago and I thought it sounded cool. I still kind of like it, it's a little bit pretentious there. So I chose tiger knits for um, this podcast. However, I want to come up with something different. So currently this episode we are nameless and hopefully by next episode I'll have a really cool catchy title because I would like that. Anyway, autumn has officially arrived here in the UK. It's depressing. We had a week of super hot, super humid, sunny, blue skies, gorgeous weather, and then one day it the heavens opened, we had thunderstorms, lightning all night, so tiring, and now it's chilly today, like, I've got my window open, but I'm wearing a roll neck, I wore one at work the other week, at the end of last week, and it feels very autumnal in the air, so part of me really likes it, I wish it could stay at this sort of stage, you know, where the air's a bit crisp, but everything's still green, and the colours are starting to change, but they're not really gone yet, because whilst I do love the colder weather, I do get sort of down when everything's grey, and the trees are really bare and everything's very brown because I don't know it makes me a bit sad so it's a bittersweet thing and I don't know I think it's one of those things as you get older seasons seem to come around so quickly I feel like when you're a kid summer lasts for years and years and years and then autumn and that whole like back to school Christmas seems to go on forever as well and then winter is very short lived and it's just sunny and it's just snowy and nice so being an adult sucks <laughs> um yeah i'll talk a bit about what's been going on in my life recently since i've had a couple of manic hectic weeks since i spoke to you guys my friend's getting married in like less than two weeks time now she's like my best friend i've known her for years and um, we work together she's getting married in like less than two weeks which is crazy because I remember it was like a year away and over a year away so we had a hen do the other weekend and that was amazing it was really good fun but it was like two full on days of drinking <laughs> and I don't do that anymore like my body is not ready for that <laughs> um but yeah her family are lovely her sister organized it it was so much fun went to a spa and did a few like girly things and a few naughty things and just lots of good fun then I had kind of like a really full on busy quite stressful week at work a bit in between and then another really busy weekend of um I went out with my friend and went up to London and had a few drinks and that was really good fun but knackering and then the straight after when I was very hungover <laughs> my other friend from work was having her baby shower and that was lovely but I was very hungover <laughs> And um, yeah, it was challenging <laughs> because I was so hungover, but um, it was lovely. And then I had another quite full on week at work. And now, like this morning, I slept in until obscenely late. I'm not even gonna tell you when. And it was blissful, like very nice. I needed it. I feel like I've not caught up on sleep. I just feel very run down. Um, because I've been so busy and I have busy weekends, I haven't really been getting into my fitness routine as much as I would have liked. And, oh, I don't know, you know when you feel really sluggish and gross. So this weekend is a weekend of like nourishment, I feel. I want to be, I need to go to the shops in a bit and buy lots of like healthy food. And so I have to make really healthy meals. And yeah, go to the gym and just get really back on it and get back feeling like myself because My door's gonna creak. Let me just go and fix that. Sorry about that, I'm back. 
so yes it feels very autumnal I've been really busy I've been quite stressed and I feel like it's like I was saying I want to get back into eating these nourishing foods and really like look after myself a bit and it's going to be a bit difficult over the next two weeks because um, currently where I live is with my parents and they're having their kitchen ripped out and refitted it's bound to take about two to three weeks um, yeah it's going to be okay I'm sort of going to make after I finish this I'm going to go to the shops and get loads of like healthy food and try and cook some meals so it's I can freeze them but um, yeah it's going to be difficult for a couple of weeks I think but anyway let's talk about some knitting stuff so where to begin I'll pick one of the bags at random so I don't think I showed you these last time I have cast on oh, a little pair of Rose City Roller socks so I knit some socks for my friend out of this yarn this read year and I thought I wouldn't really like it very much but actually it's quite pink and girly and it's not really like me but actually I kind of wanted to knit myself some so my mum bought some extra stuff because she wasn't sure if she'd get enough for a friend a pair for her friend out of some balls so I got myself I picked up the rest of that and I've knit myself a little rosy roller sock I think these are really sweet I think I might do this bit slightly longer in the future up here because I've got quite big feet but um, I think these are really fun so I've got one sock done this is the fabric I really like this I think it's really fun um, just a little slip stitch heel heel fabric and gusset and this little rolled top half through the other one well not even half actually um, and it's not going to look like anything because I'm in that weird like picking up for the gusset bit so there I am but so it's sort of like a little square at the moment but that's where I'm up to dropping my yarn everywhere and yeah I'm knitting these on my chow goos these are my absolute go-to needles now these are the 2.25 Yeah, 2.25, that's why I knit them on, I was just double checking. And I love them, the cables are amazing. Just a big fan of these. And I've got my cute little stitch markers on here to remind me of where to decrease, basically. And this is the end of a ball. And then I've got this to start. So there we go. I'm sure I've had like, I knit my friend some socks out of these and I did them two at a time. So I had two, you might remember me knitting them. I had two little ends of balls, so I finished those. So there is a join in here somewhere, which I know some people don't like to do, but I was just trying to use up ends. And then this is the last full ball I've got left. So that's good for me. I'll finish this off and then use a bit of that. So I really like these. The cap pattern is the Rose City Roller Socks by Mara Catherine Briner or Brinner. I'm not sure you say it, say it, and lots of people knit these, and she does some variations of these as well. But um, yeah, I'm definitely a fan. I think they're really sweet, and they'd be great just like bed socks or like slipper socks around the house. And the yarn was quite cheap, so if they wear out, I'm not super fussed. And yeah, I'm quite pleased with these. So put that in there, and oh, whilst I've I'm just really seeing what's in the bottom of this bag. <laughs> So, a couple of weekends ago, my mum was sorting out some of her, like, craft stuff. And I came across her fabric drying stuff. And I thought, oh, you know what be really fun? It's just having a go at dyeing some yarn. So I had a tiny amount of Jobs Farble white, like, off-white, I think the colour is. It was from knitting my friend's little baby sweater. And I thought, why not have a go at dyeing some up? So I've wound them into like mini skeins, like very mini, mini skeins. And where can I put these to... I'll put them back in this bag for now. So... 
I'm quite pleased with this one. This is like a little dark purple to green one. And I, yeah, had so much fun dyeing these. And it makes me really want to get some um, bigger skeins and give it a go. I mean, the colours that I was using were quite primary colours because I just wanted to see how it came out. But um, my mum does have some like really nice dyes and things, so I might have a play with some of these. And so I get on. This was sort of like a bright yellow lime green. They're sort of washing out a bit on camera. They're much more vibrant in real life. This one I really like. This is a like a variegated green one where I left some bits sort of almost undyed. Oh, I'll have to pick that up in a minute. This is a dark purple and pink one. A bright turquoise. Oh, I like this one. This is like a scarlet one with some bits of purple in. Or some dark ready purple pits. This was a bit like that other pinky purple one, but with turquoise as opposed to the dark blue. So that was pretty cool. And then my last two. This was the bright pink mixed with some scarlet. And this one I think is my favourite one, is the bright yellow mixed with the pink and some of the scarlet. So I'm quite pleased with my little like selection of minis. I know they're very mini, I think they're, I keep dropping them on the floor. I think they're all like three or four grams each. So what I thought I would do is knit some of them into my cosy memories patchwork blanket. And yeah, I'm quite excited by that. So I'll put those away for now, I just thought I'd show you them. Right, dun dun dun! This is my sweater and this has made so much progress since I saw you guys last. I spoke to you guys even. This is the Carpino sweater by Carol Feller. It's a Brooklyn tweed pattern I think. No, I think I know it is. Oh, a bit of yarn everywhere. I'm knitting it out of this Treskelion Elin sock yarn, which is a really nice rusticy brown, and this is in the woodcutter colourway. And that's a very true to life colour of it, it's really nice. It's a 100% British high twist, British high twist? 100% high twist superwash British blue face letter, I was thinking that I should say. 110 grams, 390 metres. Someone's like drilling something outside. I hope that's not going to be too noisy. And dun 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 dun. Look at this! I have cast off the bottom, and I am halfway through a sleeve. So I think this is where I was at last time. I showed you I was this little progress keeper. So I've knit all the way down the bottom. Did the cast off and the ribbing. You do a twisted rib for the bottom and then I did a tubular cast off which is super stretchy and really nice because I've had problems before I've made a sweater and then the cast off has been very tight at the bottom and I don't like it so I have sewn this end in and trimmed off so don't judge me. Um yeah it does need a block I've tried it on and it does fit, but I think it will fit nicer when it's, well, it fits fine. I think it will fit me nicer when it's had a good block. Because I think it just needs to sit a bit differently. But I love it, I can wear it as is. So there we go. And then I've got this sleeve to do here. And I'm currently in the middle of this sleeve. So these are my decreases. I'm going to shut that window. are doing today. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm just using stitch markers to mark my decreases because 
goodness, I remember otherwise. And yeah, still in love with this. Every time I try it, I know I'm so excited by it. This hole still drives me absolutely mental. Look at it. Ah. This is where I did a weird yarn over when I was getting used to the pattern. And I didn't realise it until I was like down here and I was like, I'm not freaking unripping all that back. <laughs> so, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew it up at the end, but it's okay. It's okay. And I think I pick up around the edges and do some sort of like eye cord bind off, which I've not done before, so that should be interesting. But yeah, I'm so in love with it. And it's getting really soft and really cosy. Just can't wait to wear it now, particularly now that it's getting a little bit cooler. Like today I woke up and I was like, just want to wear that sweater. Just want to wear it. So, there we go. And yes, I will move my stitch, my progress keeper now. So, but I suppose you'll be able to tell. So I think next time I speak to you, will probably be finished by the way. Because these are nipping off the needles. Nipping off the needles so quickly. Um, yeah, it's. I was still watching Danny of the Little Bob and Knits podcast um, this week, maybe yesterday, the day before. And she was saying, she doesn't really like knitting sleeves. And I'm like, sleeves are not the problem. <laughs> I think it's the body which takes, it feels like you're getting nowhere. Like my stitch marker was like, my pro skew was like here. And just that much felt like it took forever. I think maybe because I'm excited to wear it, to be honest. But sleeves, I think, go really quickly. Da -da -da. More jangly now. I tried this on and showed my dad, well, I showed my mum and my dad was in the room. And he was like, why have you got something jingling on you? He was like, you know there's something on your back, don't you? I was like, yes, dad, it's a project, progress keeper. So anyway, I'm really excited to wear this. Hoping next time I speak to you, it'll be done. I can't see it taking much longer because it's such like zen knitting. Because it's just like a lace pattern or stockinette and it's so easy to memorize. You know, just go sit quickly and I love it. I really love it. So I don't think, yeah, I haven't got a picture to show you. There you go, that's it. But I don't think this, it might have an icon bind up, I'm not sure. Sorry for rustling, by the way. But I'm not sorry. So I think I might have quite a lot of yarn left over because I've got this and this. So this, I would say, is maybe 40 grams left. And then I don't know how much is here, but this is from, I had a knot in basically, I just cut it off and started on a new bit. And so that will do most of one sleeve, I think. I've got a whole other skein. And I knew it wouldn't take all of this. I think I worked out it would take like 3.2 skeins of yarn. Um, so I know that designers factor in a little bit extra but I was not making it risking it. Um, and these are all the same dye lot so what do I make with this? Maybe some socks or something? I might do that actually. So there we go. I'm very excited by this. I'm knitting this on I think they're three point something needles. They're my Knit Pros, which are fine, but one of them's bent. So I think I'm gonna move everything across to Chow Goose. I don't think I'll buy any more Knit Pros. They're useful, but meh, meh. Right, last two projects to go in my other kitty cat bag is my Diamonds for Lisa Shaw, which, guys, I lost a game of yarn chicken. So, I was in love with this last time, and I still am in love with it. Like, this yarn is absolutely gorgeous. Like, it feels so soft, it's so squishy. Um, oh, I kind of don't want to give it away. Um, excuse the jangling of the needles is hitting on my laptop on my bed. Let me try and hold these. Ah, oh, this is where that cable was. I was looking for this size cable. Um, 
Yeah, so you start in the middle and increase out and then you pick up and do this lacy border, which is lovely, but I don't know why I do this. I pick patterns, which this is a lovely pattern, but I don't know if it's been tested brilliantly because some of the numbers don't match up and it's not very clear what you do in some places. <laughs> I would say if you're a beginner, do not knit the shawl because once you know what the knitter means, it's fine. What the writer means, it's fine. But um, if you don't know, you have to sort of get your head into what they want you to do. That makes sense. Which I don't necessarily think is a perfect pattern for beginners, if that makes sense. But anyway, I've enjoyed knitting it. However, it's not obvious how many repeats you need or um, how many like you do. It just says like this many, just pattern until the edge, basically. And um, so you start here and you work all the way along. I don't know, maybe this is common for shawls. I don't knit a huge amount, but I don't know. As a beginner, I would say don't necessarily do this. So I've got to here, this is how much I've got left. And this is how much yarn I've got left. And to be fair, I don't have as much yarn as the pattern calls for, so whatever. But it also said something about repeats and oh, I don't know. I was trying to work out the repeats based on the number and the stitches and just didn't really add up. So what I did was, I'm really sorry for the jangling of the needles, by the way, they hit my radiator and my laptop. I contacted, this yarn is absolutely gorgeous. Like I'm obsessed with it. I want to buy a thousand skeins of it. It's a, the brand is Whimsy and it's the Sakuzo O and this is the denim colorway and it's 100% Merino. So obviously it's lovely. Um, it's really squishy, really amazingly soft. But unfortunately I ran out and I contacted the seller because it's a lady called um, Ling. Yeah, Ling. And um, I just said, have you, because she has like, this is the denim colorway. And now on her website, she has like four different variations of the denim. So like a light wash denim through to like a dark, which I think is really cool. And I'd love to make something out of that. But I was like, I don't know which one is the closest one to this one. So I sent her a message and she said, oh, I'll send you some and you can have a look. And the lovely lady put two of these skeins in for me. And I think this one is closest to this color. This is a really nice one, but it's clearly a bit brighter. So um, I will send this one back to her or um, see if she wants me to give it away as a prize or something like that, because that was very lovely of her and she didn't have to do that. Parcel people outside a bit for my neighbours. And if they're not in, I'll have to go and get it. Oh no, it's for me. My mother has been ordering things online. So yes, I need to wind this up and finish this off. And this is a birthday present for my mum. Her birthday's in October. But um Yeah, she might get it slightly before. But I would really super recommend um Whimsy Yarns. She has an amazing collection on her website. And very reasonably priced for amazing quality and all hand dyed, amazing colour selection. So I'm a bit off breath, I have to run up and down the stairs to get that parcel. Because <laughs> what you sometimes like, they ring the bell, and if you don't go there in like 30 seconds, they just bugger off. And then sometimes they like pull up outside your house and then just drive off and say you went in. No. So, <laughs> um, yeah, love this yarn so much. I really want to knit myself something out of this. I'm thinking maybe a jumper. Now I know how much fun a top-down raglan out of sock yarn is. What can I say? So there we go. Hopefully that'll be finished and blocked by the next time I see you guys or speak to you. The last object is in my Animals of Farthing wood bag 
and this doesn't make much progress I'll be honest because I do this when I go to like the crochet night with the girls from work so this is my granny square crochet bag so it's getting there now it has to be 12 inches across I don't think this is there yet no I've got a while to go uh, it's about 10 inches at the moment so I just work on this when I go there because they will do crochet and then they look at you funny if you do knitting in a very nice way so I work on that and also they're there to help me if I get stuck which I do get stuck quite often the yarn is this cotton light by drops and it's colour 31 which I think was pearl grey or something like that but um I love the colour, just the yarn's very splitty, so I didn't, wouldn't rush to do this uh, this in the future. But this is really good, because now I sort of know... I think the problem is with crochet, is it's not really like stuck in my brain, and I don't know why. So anyway, that's making progress. The girls from the crochet group are going to the Knit and Stitch Festival in... Alexandra Palace in a couple of weekends time but I might be going to the Freeze Art first I need to double check which one is who's going where on which day so I might be end up going to both which would be fun right on to finished objects I only have one to show you this week and these are my finished business casual socks by Tannis Lavelle 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 I've got a bit of my hair on these I think are going to be a Christmas present for my brother I did wear them the other day when I had cold feet in the house. There they are. They had this cool cable pattern on. There was a couple of places that the cables go the wrong way. We were supposed to like overlap them and I went the wrong way. But my brother won't care, he won't notice. So I think these will be for him for Christmas. Because um, they're a little bit big for me. But um, I think they'll fit him fine. And they're a manly colour, they're grey. And they're quite hard wearing so you can always wear them as like walking socks or something. So I'm quite pleased with those. The yarn is Drops Fable Farble. It's not this one, but it's this label. It's like the long print one. And I think it's... Um, I want to say Silver Fox. But I could be really off there. And there's the other one, I did a, I went through a phase of trying to perfect the toe up sock and then since I learnt it I've only done top down, I don't know. I do really like the way a heel flap and gusset looks, I just prefer how quick a toe up sock is. Oh there's loads of geese flying in a V, you know it's autumn when that happens. Can you hear them? Oh, cute. And the sky looks very grey over there. I was going to go out later, but might just stay in instead. So there we go. I finished those. It's kind of a poor show. I also finally, finally, finally sewed on the buttons for my friend's little baby sweater. She was one whose baby shower it was that we went to. And I did take some pictures, so I will insert these now. Yeah, so I'm very pleased with that and she really loved it and I do have a picture of her <laughs> holding it against her baby bump. So she's due in like, I think her due date is the 24th, so it's not a long way now at all. So she's had her induction booked in in case, unless baby comes before then. And yeah, she's having a little boy and hopefully it will be very exciting and complication free. So. Yes, um, other things to talk about. So the only other thing I want to talk about was a cow that I'm going to join. So when, I don't know, I might just cast it on, so I need to skein up the yarn basically. So I followed Jacqueline of the Brooklyn Knit Vote podcast for ages on Instagram. Like I think before I even started podcasting, before I started even watching podcasts, I don't know how I found her. I've just followed her for ages and ages. And then I found her podcast and I was like, this is the best thing ever. And what she is doing, she's doing an elemental cow. 
I think she's calling it. And it's all based on these books which I read when I was like a young adult. And I was obsessed with them. I didn't know that anyone else had read them. More geese. There's thousands of them. Oh no, it makes me really sad. <laughs> it does feel like winter. Mm. Anyway, back to what I was talking about. Yeah, so I read these books as a kid and I was obsessed with them and I, had a, I made a friend read them so I could talk to her about them. Like, I was a bit of a nerdy kid. I read literally anything and everything I could get my hands on. They did some tests on me when I was a kid and I had quite a, well, I had a very advanced reading age for my age. And I remember that like, I just basically read everything that was in the school library when I was in juniors, that they let me go and pick books from like the big person, the big kids library, which was like attached to secondary school. And I thought that was like the best thing ever. And then I had to teach other kids to read. Well, I had to spend time reading with other kids. A bit of a geek, but I loved reading anyway. And I was obsessed with these books. I think I was maybe like 13, 14 when they came out. And I was in love with them. So they're called, I think they're called something different in America. They're called the Sweep series. But in the UK, they were marketed as Wicca. And these are very well read, as you can probably see. When were they actually published? 2002, so I was 12 when they came out, yeah. Um, yeah, so they're based on this girl who, Morgan, who discovers she's a witch, basically, and lives in, like, a school in America. So I think, is in a town in America, sorry, in, like, New York State, I think it's supposed to be. Um, yeah, so I think in America they come as, like, a volume, but um, over here they came out individually as books. So... They're very like autumnal, like witchy, Halloweeny books, and I love autumn, love Halloween, um, love everything like that. So yes, I'm quite excited to read those. And she has some patterns on there. I wasn't like none of them were like really screaming out to me. I'm not a massive shawl person, and I know obviously I'm making that shawl for my mum, but like I probably wouldn't wear those. And there was one that I loved, but I don't have the yarn for it, and. I can't justify buying the yarn for it right now because <laughs> I've got a lot of lovely yarn in my stash. But what I did find was I've got this beautiful skein of hedgehog fibres, like beautiful green, and I think it's called Hunter Green. And I'm going to knit the, um, I wrote them down here, the Morning Light Socks by Cabin 4. They've got sort of like a cable twisty pattern on there. So I'm going to skein that up, I think, this afternoon and cast those on because I felt like it fit quite nicely because one of the characters in the book is called Hunter, Hunter Green, and I'm a very green person. So I think that's what I'll do with them. Yeah, but I'm very excited to join that because I love those books and she's got some threads on her Ravelry group and all sorts of things, which made me very excited to go and join in. And I'm gonna um, sit and read this later today, I think. They take like, they're really quick to read like they're very big font and um yeah they're not very taxing but I did really like them I was obsessed with anything like witchy as a kid me and my friend used to write spells and things like that like I don't know I've just got a big place in my heart for witchcrafty things and I think if I probably wasn't raised catholic I would probably, and it wouldn't have pissed my mum off, <laughs> I would be a lot more into it when I was a kid, but yes. So I'm going to join that and then really I just want to like finish my sweater and I've got lots of lovely yarn that I want to show you. And oh my gosh, I forgot what I okay, brought in here to show you. So I can show you this now. Basically, my friend who I've spoken about, he's getting married in a couple of weeks. This is what I've been working on in the background and this has been, oh my god, so painful. I am not a sewer. Like, sewing does not come easily, does come not, not come naturally. No. What I've made her, I made her when she moved out was a little, um, say a little, little blanket quilt thing. It was made out of some flannel fabric and it was very soft and cosy. It was more just have like on the back of her sofa. 
But um, whenever I go around, her and her partner love it. We always got it out, I always put it over them. They're really obsessed with it. And I thought, well, I will make them a quilt for their wedding present. It's not made out of flannel, it's made out of some really nice cotton fabrics. And it's been a struggle. <laughs> like, this is not like my natural habitat. But it is now finished, and I'm gonna hold it up. It's all band packaged up, ready to give her. But um, it's got this chevron design and it's in purple grey, this turquoise and this mint green and I've put a little bow around it as you can see and it was going to give to her this week but then um couldn't see her for whatever reason so she'll get it next week I think and then she gets married in like two weeks time so I figured that'd be fine. I didn't want to bring it to the wedding because it's quite like weighty um so I thought I'd just drop it off at her house beforehand um, yeah, so my mum sort of did all the, I sewed it all and I cut it all, I just, um, apart from the binding, I just, um, I don't know how to do these things. So she, um, told me how to cut everything and what to measure it to. And I don't know what the pattern is called, it's just like a chevron design, I guess. I know there are things like flying geese and stuff like that, but I don't know if that's technically what this is. The fabric I do know is this, this per turquoise and the purple are um, Moda Grunge I want to say and then I think the turquoise and the back which is like a light blue I don't know if you can see there it's like a light blue are Moda Solids I think that's what my mum said and then this is like a grey textured one and this white has little dots on so I'm very, very pleased with that. Hopefully she'll like it. Um, as long as she doesn't let the dog sit on it, I'm happy. <laughs> she can do what she wants with it. And I just, I thought it would be a nice thing. So I didn't really know what to get her. I thought for a long time about knitting her some lace shawl, but I kind of wanted something that both her and her partner can enjoy. And they do really love that quilt I made them. So I was like, and that was a very like, poorly made one. Like, this is a lot better made. It's not like the really soft fabric. I know they do like that. I'm hoping they still like it but um yeah I think it'll go nice in their house they have some of that turquoise they have some curtains that color it downstairs and they have a gray sofa that matches and then upstairs in the bedroom they've got purple bread spread I think and dark gray curtains from what I remember so I'm hoping if they want it downstairs or they've got it upstairs it will match quite nicely and I think even the spare bedroom is turquoisey because I know Amy really likes the turquoise and the purples so fingers crossed she likes it and that is her wedding present from my mum has put some money in for it because fabric is not cheap like my mum has made me beautiful quilts and things before and I'm just like I don't know I don't disregard how much money they are but when you have to like cost it all up it's expensive like I know she's obviously my best friend so I wouldn't mind doing it for her but I don't really think about it and then I think about how cheap clothes are and things and I think should all be much more expensive like I was in anthropology the other day and they had these like quilt topper type things and they're just like two layers of fabric with some wadding in between and just like stitched all the way through and like that is not complicated and they were saying them for like 200 pounds and I'm like that has had a lot more work gone into it like the fabric costs are not as much as that but like I don't know clothes and I was talking to my brother's partner about this she makes all her own clothes and I think the amount of work that goes into like decent clothes they should be a lot more expensive than they are and it makes me sad I don't know anyway I think I rambled on for much longer than I had intended to today but my camera didn't cut out so that's always good I don't know what you guys are up to hopefully you're keeping warm and enjoying sort of like the winter setting what time is it? It's about two o'clock now, so I think I might go have some lunch and maybe go to the gym. Maybe, don't know if I feel like it today. Um, I'm gonna go swimming tomorrow because I haven't been in like three weeks and I was getting so into it. So it's kind of a shame I have not been. What else, what else, what else, what else? I think that's pretty much it. 
I'm gonna go make myself a cup of tea because that squash is not hitting the spot. And then maybe read some of my book and chill. Tidy up all this mess I've made from podcasting. Anyway, I will see you all very soon. Oh, that's what I'm gonna talk about. I talked a bit at the beginning about um just before I go, I talked a bit at the beginning about naming the podcast. So hopefully by next week, next time a podcast, not next week, I will have a name for this podcast for you. And the reason behind that is I want to start a rivalry group because people have started commenting a lot more and that's really exciting. And I know I've not necessarily got back to you in the speediest of manners, but please forgive me, I've had a mental couple of weeks. Like my job has been very full on recently and it's taking its toll on me. So in the evenings I just sort of come home and conk out basically if I've not gone to the gym. <laughs> So, please forgive me. And yes, yeah, so I want to create a Ravelry group and I'm not really sure what to call it. So I'm gonna have some brainstorm today, I think, about what I want to say. And then I can set up a Ravelry group. And then hopefully all you guys that watch, because I've got something like 60 odd subscribers now, hello. And you can all come and join and we can have a chit chat over there. Cause that'd be really exciting and much easier because the commenting system on YouTube is kind of annoying because it like appears in the top bit but then you can't go back to it. YouTube. Well it's Google isn't it? Go and start your Google Plus somewhere else. <laughs> um, right, that is definitely it now. This has gone on for way too long. There has been interruptions galore, wind and geese and parcel men and I'm watching a magpie fall off the roof on my neighbour's roof. He's trying to like bend all the way down. Anyway, definitely getting off topic. Maybe next time I speak to you I'll have a shiny new kitchen and other exciting things. Like, oh I completely forgot to say I saw the mortgage advisor this week. Uh, so that's all becoming very real. I've um, worked out my budget which is kind of scary and exciting in the same way and soon I get to actually go and start looking at properties which is definitely quite terrifying and it's like why does anyone trust me to own a house <laughs> who knows right 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 I definitely definitely will go now so I'll try to cast and cast off see what I did there I tried to end this um podcast like 10 times now so I'm just gonna say have a nice time, have a good day, keep warm, enjoy the beginning of autumn and I'll speak to you all very soon. Bye!